Welcome to the Chet TV News. I'm Trent McManus. Here are our top stories for today. The Peace River Regional District is going to cash in if Site C is approved. Grand Theft Auto Chetwind. A local man is on the lookout for his stolen Jeep. A night full of booze, drugs, and hookups has landed a man in court. Hunters beware when bringing deer back to our province. A local hero is still missing and you can help find him. And finally, RCMP are searching for a female suspect who assaulted a Grand Prairie man. The controversial Site C could mean big dollars locally. If Site C is approved, BC Hydro will give the Peace River Regional District $2.4 million a year. The two groups were able to reach a regional legacy benefits agreement, which will make sure the PRRD will receive an annual payment for the next 70 years when Site C is operational. PRRD Chair Karen Goodings explains that the regional district asked Hydro for an agreement like this to recognize the contributions it would be making for this project to go ahead. However, this isn't the end for community agreements. Community Relations Manager for the Site C Clean Energy Project, Dave Conway, suggests there's still the potential for agreements with individual communities. For example, mitigation would be needed for the potential impacts of a large workforce in Fort St. John, like transportation, and the reservoir impact on the district of Hudson's Hope. In its environmental impact statement, Hydro is committed to giving Hudson's Hope a one-time contribution to address how the land will no longer be available for development and provide annual grants in lieu, which is estimated at $1.3 million to local government through operations. The opposition believes that Site C will ruin the ecosystem and destroy the agricultural land in surrounding areas, this while the environmental assessments are ongoing. A vehicle known for not having doors or a roof has been stolen in Chetwind. A Jeep Wrangler was stolen Friday night near the Pinecone Inn in Suites. The RCMP are appealing for any information that may get this Jeep back to its Chetwind owner. The Jeep Cherokee ranked number 7 on ICBC's list of most stolen cars in BC, while the Wrangler didn't make the list in 2012. A man accused of sexual assault against two women in Dawson Creek was in court Tuesday evening. The Crown Council outlined that it was a night full of booze, drugs, and hookups. However, the man Edward Aaron James Cook appeared to refute many of the claims against him, shaking his head often. The defense was unable to make their comments by the deadline of this story. The ca- this case opens on the heels of a different man being sentenced to nine years in the Dawson Creek courtroom for assaulting his daughter and stepdaughter. That trial closed at the beginning of 2013. BC Hydro had their hands full Thursday. Two separate outages had crews working hard in the north. The first interruption occurred in the 6900 block and Six Mile Road in Smithers. Power was down for nearly four hours due to motor vehicle accidents. The other interruption occurred midday Thursday in Chetwind. One of three grids was affected because of wires going down. Local businesses and some households were without power for a span of nearly five hours. And for a brief period, Eastlink Internet was down but shortly returned. If you're thinking of bringing your deer carcasses into British Columbia, think again. New signs have been set up along Highway 49 near Dawson Creek and Highway 3 near Sparwood. The signs are a part of a public awareness campaign that the provincial government has launched in an effort to keep chronic wasting disease out of this province. The, de- the deadly disease has been killing deer, elk, and moose in some areas of Alberta and Saskatchewan. It can spread when a healthy animal comes in contact with an infected animal, infected tissue, or soil contaminated by the protein. However, hunters are still allowed to bring meat, hides, antlers, and parts of skulls back to BC, but that's if they've been treated and all tissue is removed. A fund is being set up to support the recovery efforts of local man Sid Neville. Neville was lost in Francois Lake Friday when his boat capsized in bad weather. Family has contacted an Idaho underwater search team to find the 35-year-old's body. You can help by making donations to any RBC branch across the country under Neville's wife's name, Marley. A Grand Prairie man was assaulted 8 kilometers west of the city Monday night. 
The 51-year-old man claims he was at a coffee shop and was approached by a woman who asked for help to get her vehicle free and it become stuck. He agreed and then followed her out to Range Road 52. Once they arrived, the man was sprayed in the face with an eye irritant, assaulted and knocked unconscious. The victim was taken to hospital with, with what's believed to be non-life-threatening injuries. Suspect is a female with dark hair and driving a gray car. If you have any information, call the RCMP or Crime Stoppers. Police are trying to link two serious crimes in the area. Corporal Jody Schelke confirmed that the RCMP believed the murder of a 30-year-old man near Charlie Lake on June 30th. On June 3rd was drug-related. She also adds that the investigators have not ruled out the possibility that the homicide may be related to another crime that happened June 7th. The latter was a home invasion which occurred just four days after the 20-year-old man was found dead in a field. Police say there's no risk to public safety from either of these attacks. Although there isn't currently a fire ban, there is a warning. If you're thinking about heading out camping this weekend, make sure you're extra cautious when lighting campfires. The Prince George Fire Center says that although there hasn't been much wildfire activity in the area in the past few weeks, fire danger levels are high due to dry conditions in the north. There's currently no open fire ban in the Peace Region, but anyone heading into the back country is reminded to be vigilant and take precautions, especially to avoid escape fires. And finally, congratulations to the Dawson Creek and Chetwin winners of the Funniest Father in the Peace. I'm joined right now live in studio by a pair of smiling guests. they got plenty to be happy about. It is our Chetwin winners in the Funniest Dad in the Peace contest. And uh, there's our lucky winner right there. She's not getting the prizes, but she is the one who entered her dad to win them. Kristen Bodo. Kristen, how are you feeling right now? Good. Good? Are you happy that you're able to do something nice for your dad for Father's Day? Yeah. What makes your dad so funny? He tickles me. <laughs> See, is he a tickle monster? Yeah. Yeah? Happy Father's Happy Day. Happy Father's Day. The Chetwin winner will now receive a prize package worth over $1,000, including a helicopter ride, a fire pit, golf passes, and a host of other prizes. You're now up to date in the Peace Region Sports and News for Chet TV. I'm Trevor McManus.